educated. That's exactly my intelligent level. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Don't get it wrong. Not too much, but not too little. Like we're in between. Welcome guys. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. Today, I wanted to have a topic discussion regarding two hot topics that I've been seeing on the internet regarding Issa Rae and Kenya Barris with Insecure and Black AF. I've been seeing a lot how people have been saying specifically with Insecure, I believe it's in season four and with Black AF being a new show created by Kenya Barris on Netflix, how people have had a lot of commentary regarding how these two shows, I guess, are a conflicting or a bad depiction regarding black families black culture and how black people really act in real life. Now, Insecure, I'm a really big fan. I love Issa Rae. I've been following her ever since Awkward Black Girl on YouTube. If you haven't watched it, you should. It's hilarious. Kenya Barris, I have tried to watch Blackish from the beginning and I kind of fell off and I've been watching Grownish. I watched like the first two seasons and I haven't picked back up. I've been watching Black AF and I can definitely say I see the reactions. Um, I can definitely see the mixed reviews of it. So Insecure, I really like the show. I'm a big fan of the show. I would definitely say for me, I definitely love the cinematography of the show. Uh, the music is amazing. The music is top tier, good taste. I know that Solange was part of the music in the first season. It was the real depiction of Issa in telling the stories of her and her real life friends. Uh, her best friend represents Molly, and then you have Tiffany, and then you have Kelly. And then, you know, of course, of the love interest with Issa regarding Lawrence, Daniel, and then Nate. The most thing that I'm hearing from Insecure is the fact that a lot of people think it's whitewashed. What I really love about Issa's show is the fact that it's all black creative. You have black writers, you have black actors. Um, this season, Kerry Washington directed some episodes, so you have more black creatives coming in too coming to the table. But the problem that people are having is that I guess they feel it's not a realistic depiction of how black people act in everyday life. I would say for me, I don't see that. I think at most, it's probably not as relative. It's not something that everybody can relate to. And I think what a lot of people are upset about is the fact I think they want less of the caricatures that they're seeing regarding how Kelly is the funny friend because she's Big. They believe that because she's the fat friend, she has to be the comedic relief and how Tiffany serves as, because she's light skin, she serves as, you know, the typical, how people stereotype light skin people. The fact that she's high class better than she has to be bougie, um, primp and ready and have, you know, the perfect lifestyle. But really the dynamic is the fact that you have Issa and Molly being uh, the two main characters in the sense, and they're both dark skinned women. Molly herself serves as high class, her, herself being a lawyer. Um, she's part of the sorority of being an AKA. And then you have Issa, who is your regular degular, looking away to find her life, trying to get her life together, dealing with the fact that she has a boyfriend and her boyfriend problems, whatever, what have you. I think what people want more of it, I guess, is to be more relative with them and their life. And I think as the seasons have grown, they think that the show in itself is at a standpoint. It has plateaued. It's just the same thing every season of the fact that Issa has some type of problem with her boyfriend and the depiction, I guess the light that it shows with black relationships thing is the fact black men don't cheat. Thing being the fact that how Issa cheated on Lawrence and people are like, you know, Issa cheated on Lawrence and y'all didn't come at her. But as soon as Lawrence hooked up with old girl, you know, all hell broke loose. Uh, they had like a whole Lawrence is over party, kick him out the show, he's trash, garbage, throw him away. I think with Insecure, I think what people want more, I guess, you know, a lot of times with black TV and black creative, what I'm seeing is that there are so many critiques and I don't think critiques are a bad thing. You know, everybody needs critiques. And I think the other part that is given is the fact that they're saying, should we let shows be bad shows that are, you know, written by black creatives because, you know, you so badly want representation, right? Issa Rae has a show on HBO that has, that is her own show that is depicted on her real life. And none of it is cookie cutter. None of it is stereotypical for the most part. And it's not in the sense, ironically, overseen by white creatives. And then we have Black AF. So with Black AF, it takes place as a documentary series um, that is dry humor. It's like a documentary series over reality TV show. 
Kenya Barris uh, plays as a star with Rashida Jones playing his wife and their daughter, Drea, I want to say her name is, she basically is documenting, making a documentary of her father and their life at home for her application for NYU. Every episode um, that I'm watching as it goes deeper and further, it tries to take on each dynamic or social issue that's brought upon within the black community, but some of it can be a hit or miss. The most famous symbolic thing throughout the whole show, every episode is because of slavery, right? You're doing this because of slavery. And I think that's a joke regarding the fact that how we haven't got reparations yet. First episode, it talks about uh, the white gaze and how the white gaze, <laughs> not gaze. It talks about the white perspective within society of how basically white people look at black people. The fact that the only way we can be validated is wearing uh, high class clothing, wearing chains, doing everything that's stereotypical that they think that we have to do in order to validate ourselves within society or show our wealth. And the fact that we too can be on the same equal level playing field as white people. It also talks about, you know, black women, the fact of how their marriage, when it started, how she was the backbone of their relationship, her being a lawyer, and he was just starting out being a writer. And then as he became more successful as a writer, she quit her job as a lawyer, had her children, and then became a stay at home mom. And so now she's in this crisis of trying to get back, you know, her life and really kind of validate herself. One thing that I do wish that they talked about which is, you know, a serious issue in America today is how black women are being treated, you know, during their pregnancy and being in the hospital and how their health is being taken advantage of and it's not being taken seriously. And how you have more deaths with black women giving birth to children or having high risks of health issues. It was like a casual thing that they brought up in the show of how she almost died um, giving birth to their most recent son and because you know she was on bed rest and she nearly almost died that's why she decided to quit her job and stay home because of recovery and the fact that she might have had postpartum depression showed how with kenya he wasn't there i guess as a rock or being as supportive as she would have liked and even the most highlight is the fact that how when you obtain wealth as a black person and you finally get into the circle with being in the elitism of being a high class person, being a billionaire or a millionaire, how that changes you mentally, how that changes your perspective on things and how, you know, your whole life now is basically you, you can marginalize, marginalize people who live in poverty, people who actually have to do the realities of certain social and class issues and how that's not a problem for you anymore. It's funny in some ways, and I think it does a great job with having all these high star uh, black athletes, black writers, black creatives within the show. And I think the social issues that it's trying to project, it's either you're going to laugh at it or not. And I think you doing it as a dry humor like this, the fact that you have to constantly talk about it, the fact that it's constantly brought up front in your face where he deliberately says it and you have to go into a whole explanation, whether you're doing that to actually use that as an educational purpose, I think it's a little overdone. It's like this lull of bringing you into comedy, breaking the fourth wall, and then trying to bring you back into the show and then leaving you here and there with spaces of serious tension, like real actual tension or real actual plot that's trying to pro progress with throughout the show. What you're trying to do is tokenize social issues and you're trying to put it together in one neat envelope and make it into a series of comedy because you want people to know that y'all aren't taking this seriously or y'all think it's such a joke, let me do it as comedy. And you know, that's a hit or miss. I think people wanted it to be done in a more creative aspect, right? Kind of like Insecure. And Insecure, and not trying to compare the two in the sense that one is better than the other, but in the sense of how both of them talk about social issues. Both of them talk about the unique perspective of a black life and different viewpoints of being black in America. Insecure, Molly and Issa specifically bring up of being a black woman within the workspace and how you are the minority within your work, in your workspace. Issa, I think in season one, when she worked at We Got Y'all, how she faced a lot of passive aggressiveness. On top of that, being the only black woman in her workspace to uh, work with the inner city kids. And they wanted her to be the main advocate and basically be the face and the token for We Got Y'all and talk to the lower income city kids. And when they were 
brainstorming the idea and it was her idea i believe she started the idea it's been so long since i watched it but i believe she birthed the idea how her boss who's a white woman took the idea and labeled it as her own molly she is a lawyer working at a high class job and how she's depicted and written as a character she struggles or i guess not struggle but how she even acknowledges the fact of her her status as a lawyer um when she was working at her old firm she was only one of the very few black lawyers that was acknowledged and respected and how she even still had to work 10 times harder. The whole debacle that she had when she found out how her one of her male counterparts was being paid more than she was. And I believe she was more qualified than him. And then how she moved to a black firm and she thought because she was at a black firm that everything was going to be different, that everything was going to be chill. And she thought that she could just be, you know, her more natural self and everybody would like that. But she ran into different people who for themselves, saw how she was acting as ghetto or weird. Even now, the big conflict is that it's like somebody at her job, I don't know his name, I forget, but he's a, a partner in the firm with her. And he's saying, you don't have to be cool with me because we're black, right? That they can both be professional in the workspace, but just because that they're both, you know, people of color and that they're all in a black firm, that they ain't gotta be, you know, tight like that. And I think a lot of people can digest that more because it's way more in a fictional setting where it's easier to digest. There's a lot more room for it to be funny and there's a lot more room for it to be creative versus Black AF where it's just very simple, straight, dry cut humor. And not everybody can take that. I think further into Black AF, I even see how one thing I think that's very tiring, in my opinion, is how every place that they go with white people, they like to bring up the fact that they have to prove their wealth or they like to highlight the fact that, oh my gosh, how do you think these black people can afford this? Which is a true thing. But the fact that you keep saying it as a bold statement, specifically in the show, they do like the most craziest things in order to get the point across that they do have money and they're not aka low class people. I think Black AF for what it is, it's just showing a hard, I guess a hard simple reality of, you know, maybe for him in his real life of how he grew up, you know, his perspective of how he came into wealth, into elitism and how people still label him and he wanted to do like a hard dry cut humor of the fact like, no, this is how it really is. But I will say with these two shows, um, I think at the end of the day, it's work. It's work that's created and it should be respected. I think it's definitely something that you should give it a chance and room for grace for it to grow, at least with Black AF. Insecure is in season four. And I will say that seasons have gone on. I think there are certain things that have gotten stagnant, but this season, if you've been watching, it has been caught on with some real drama, specifically with Molly and Issa. There is room for growth. There is always room for grace. Um, and if they are listening and they're actually hearing the audience, hearing whoever, you know, they respect as opinion for people who are on the same level as them, um, hopefully it will turn around and it will get better. Every black creator and every black writer is trying to tell a story, right? The whole point of being a black creative, the whole point of being a black writer is that you want to bring something to the table. You are trying to bring a realistic depiction of culture and history that has been seen as a stereotype, a caricature that has been overdone, marg marginalized for so long. And now that you have the opportunity to really bring what is happening to the table, you wanna do that in the best way possible. You know, the real issue is, is that once you get into that space and you start building revenue, when you start building agency, when people actually see your, you know, your work and you get critique, or I guess you get, you know, insight and advice about what you should do. Sometimes you do fall into the trap of sticking with a stereotype, sticking with a trope, or only highlighting one aspect of blackness and sticking with that. And you want to label that as something that's inclusive for everybody within the black community. And that's not true. Issa Rae, I think she does a great job. I think Issa Rae, a lot of people just have problems because they think Issa is sticking to the trope of, you know, black women, I guess, can never be wrong. Or the fact that, you know, you only can show TV shows regarding black people living in, I guess, a specific, a specific social climate um, regarding finances. The fact that, you know, Mo like Molly, Issa, Tiffany and Kelly, they're not broke, um, but they're not high class. They're just, and that's, and, and I think that's normal, but I guess that's not enough for some people or the fact that, you know, how she portrays relationships um, and portraying black men, that's, you know, for a lot of some people, that's not okay. Kenya Barris, he has fall, fallen guilty um, to the fact that for him, uh, he falls into the colorist tactics 
of the fact that you have mixed, mixed-ish, blackish, grownish, and all of it is with light-skinned people, people who are, you know, mixed or racially ambiguous being stars of the show. And that's what you highlight, you know, let those people be voices of every issue in the black community that they are the token or the face front of talking about police brutality, of talking about uh, misrepresentation in the community, of talking about reparations, talking about politics, talking about, you know, whatever. People that leaves a bad taste in their mouth because A, that's not realistic and B, that's already been used in Hollywood. But I think at the end of the day, I will say that both of these writers have came to create a story and write a story to share in the elite space of Hollywood, right? And sometimes you gotta pick and choose. Can it be better? Sure, everything can be better. Should there be more people on it? Sure. And I think hopefully with these two shows is that somehow, some way it will open the door for other people, even people like myself to come to the table and expand the table. Because at the end of the day, that's what really matters. Um, Issa Rae has opened many doors and opportunities specifically for black women. Uh, Molly, though the woman who plays Molly, uh, Yvonne Orji, she now has her own HBO special. Same thing with Amanda Seals. And if that becomes, you know, a reoccurring thing, watch how they become directors, um, producers of more black TV. Kenya Barris, he himself has opened more doors for other people and the fact that he is now I guess considered the high table and high connections with black writers like Lena Waithe, Ava DuVernay, Tyler Perry, and um, other black writers. That in itself does create opportunity. I hope, you know, later in the future with Issa Rae and Kenya Barris that they create more shows that have more inclusive themes, uh, more inclusive actors, more inclusive plot lines that can expand and be more relative for everybody in the black community think the biggest problem, and it still stands today, is that people think blackness is a monolith, that there's only one way to do it, and that there's only one avenue where it will stick, and that is entirely not true. There are so many different versions of blackness. There are so many different black people, and all of it needs to be celebrated. That's all that I have for you guys today. I hope that it made sense. I feel like it was all over the place and I do apologize. Thank you so much for watching the video. Tell me more what you want more with the videos. Tell me if you want more commentaries. Uh, what would you guys like to see? Uh, you know, quarantine, quarantine, quarantine is bringing out a lot of creative ideas. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you guys really liked it and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs>